Hey everybody, Nerdy Transformed here again, and today I'm reviewing the Transformers 07 movie, Swindle, Deluxe Class Swindle. Now Swindle here is based on a Chevrolet Cobalt, but not exactly, there's no official licensing for that, so it's kind of generic down a little bit, but you can definitely tell it's supposed to be a Cobalt. Cobalt? Cobalt? Yeah, you know what I meant. But looking at the car itself, it's a really nice sleek looking car. It does have a clear plastic for the window so you can see inside. Although from eight some angles you just see transformation junk. Pretty much from all angles you just see transformation junk or just a complete hole going through the vehicle. Uh, it does have some nice paint taps. On the front here you can actually see a tiny little hood piece that has a Decepticon sigil on it. From the sides we do get some nice silver striping. Very nice looking. And this is also back when we actually did get paint on the front and some nice clear plastic for the little headlights. The rims are actually painted silver, which is really nice. We don't get that anymore. Uh, no paint for the back, but it's kind of understandable. Some silver uh, deca Decepticon decals on the side. So it is a very nice little looking vehicle mode. For comparison, here he is next to Revenge of the Fallen Brawn. So you can see he's a typical movie deluxe. Now Swindle here does have a gimmick. You can see a little button sticking up on the back of the windshield there. You might notice the little gray panels and all that here. So how this gimmick works is he has a big cannon that comes out, and all you do is hit the button, and bam. And you can fold this panel back like that if you prefer. In this mode you could call it a giant gun of doom that you can shoot something from behind if he's being chased by autobots, or you could just say it's an extra exhaust pipe or a huge exhaust pipe for him to go faster. I kind of like the exhaust idea better, but it's a pretty neat little gimmick. One thing is pressing the button sometimes causes this piece to kind of collapse in. As he's not particularly solid, this figure does have quite a few solidity problems. But we'll get to that more in robot mode. You can see everything's kind of moved a little bit. But he has a pretty nice it does have a pretty nice vehicle mode. There was a repaint of this figure in silver and blue, I believe, in Revenge of the Fallen. Other than that though, um, not much else to say about the vehicle mode. It's a nice little vehicle mode. Looks very nice and sleek. I do actually really like this car mode. It is a really nice little car mode. But we'll get down to the transformation and show you his robot mode. This transformation is kind of interesting, but we'll show you how that goes in just a second. So what you're going to want to do is come to the doors, just kind of unpick them from the sides here, and along with the wheel. Might be kind of tricky, sometimes it gets... there we go. You gotta get that tab off of them, the back of the door there. Once you do that, it'll come out on this double hinge right here on this little strut. And you're going to want to do that for both sides, once you can get it going. It's a pretty tight little fit, so come out on the double hinges like that. Kind of make a weird looking car mode if you want, you know, zoomy zoom. Uh, as for the rest of the robot, you're going to come to the bottom here. Just unpick the side part from the central part where the gimmick is. Get some room there. Take this whole little cannon piece here. Oh, don't flip that out yet. Stay with you where you are. Whole little cannon piece in the middle here. We'll untab from there. You can go ahead and bring it up. It will kind of just collapse into here. And you want to go ahead and take the top part of the car here, unpeg that from the bottom. So you can bring it down. You're going to swivel it around. And these are going to form his legs. Oh, the other gimmick's trying to show. Ah, Alright. So for transforming legs, it's pretty simple. Take the back window. Oh, and the gimmick, other gimmick went off. We'll show you that in a second. Actually, you can't take the back window. Oh, that's right. So what you want to do first is kick these pieces and just fold them on out. Flip this back part out to give him a heat his heel and that will form his foot. Same for the other side, this inner little slot here folds around, put the heel down. Then these back window parts do flip in to not really form anything, just I guess clear up some of the car kibble if you want. And let's raise this camera a bit so you can see what's going on here. Oh. Lighting's getting kind of bright. There we go. Uh, the gimmick flipped around. You can see his head right there. There is an Omorph gimmick that keeps going off. So this cam piece that we were at earlier, you're just going to want to set that down. That's going to go off for whatever reason. Uh, there's a piece that was kind of the little backflip. will kind of fall right there to form his cob piece. Go ahead and bring all this up on the hinge. When you fold this part back, the top part of the car, it will flip around the Automorph. Like that to reveal his head. His head will come in and just the whole top of the chest will just sell it on top of the cannon piece there. You can take the top of the car and just fold it in and down the double hinge. Then come to the doors that we've messed with in the first place. 
You want to just rotate the arms out like so. There we go. And there you have 07 Movie Swindle in his robot mode. Oh, if you can get everything straight now. Um, yeah, it is not connect together well. While I was doing this whole transformation, nothing in here really connects. It's all sitting just fine. It's not going to go anywhere, but there's no pegs or anything or tabs or anything holding him together right there. But let's get the camera adjusted. And we'll go ahead and get comparisons in just a second. All right, now Swindle's in his robot mode. For comparison, here he's next to Revenge of the Fallen Brawn, and I feel like this is a really good comparison just between the two different, how much changed between movie one and movie two. As you can see, movie one was very simple, very, still some complex detail, but not complex design. While Revenge of the Fallen got a lot more complex and a lot more kibbly, I guess we could say. But a lot more neat looking figures. Just feel like that's a nice little addition here. So this window here is kind of based on one of these like spy bots or something similar like that. Um, like payload was for the Autobots. I almost get Decepticon, I can't remember now. But you know, it's, they all have these like generic little camera heads kind of looking things. Although each one does have a different looking one. They are, they aren't all the same cam like kind of head sculpt. They are a little bit different. They just all have lenses for a face. Kind of like Shockwave actually. These might make some neat, interesting Shockwave repaints. But, you know, he does look pretty nice. He is pretty kibbly. Well, not overly kibbly, but, you know, got the back here, got these hanging off the arms here. I do wish these could do something, form shields, or just make me make his arms a bit thicker. And you might have already noticed that this text is a little weird, because I'm not bending his arms like that. That's how his arms are formed. Yeah, they're, uh... He's got some pretty weird arms going on. I'm not quite sure why they're like that. I don't quite understand why you couldn't just have a hinge here to straighten out the arm. Especially since there's not really that many joints in him either. He's not particularly heavily articulated. Speaking of which, the head does swivel. Not much though. Like, you can see just how much wiggle you can really get out of it. And his head's not buried in there or anything. It's just how far it swivels. There is a modification. You do get much more head articulation, but I'm going to base figure here. The arms are ball jointed, but they can be kind of hard to use. But you can actually get outward arm articulation and it goes this far inward. It does rotate all the way around. The windows are, the doors I mean, are on ball joints so you can rotate them around if you need to. No swivel for the elbow, but there is a hinged elbow from transformation. And it is a really good elbow because it does fold back up. Um, going back, does not go any back at all though. But you do get wrist articulation, which is pretty nice. You do get inward hinge and you do get a ball joint so you can swivel it around. And that's not something you really see much today. You do actually get waist articulation too, which is also pretty rare today. I do get uh, hinge, is it, no, ball jointed hips. They go forward and back. They go this far outward, and so not too far, but decent amount. Going forward can be a little bit of an issue depending on what how uh, stiff it gets against the chest piece here. No swivel, strangely, but you do get a knee joint. And not particularly good knee joints, about 45 degrees, I would say. Not much, but you do get some knee movement at least. Well, um, if you push it, uh, okay, 90 degrees. Just gets a little stiff there. And you do actually have ankle articulation, both forward and back, which is pretty nice. So you can actually get him kind of in a stepping pose with his big old heels. He looks like he's in the middle of an opera right now. But you do have art, art, uh, some articulation. He's got a decent amount. I mean, besides the head and the you new know, swivel down here, it's a decent amount, no swivel, no, besides the swivels are basically missing on the heads, arms, and legs, he's got decent articulation. Now the main thing about this figure is his gimmick. Uh, the gimmick they had in the car mode, the big old um, exhaust pipe. Here it's a full on cannon, the button's now down here right next to, his, next to his butt. Press it, bam. Can right out of the chest, ready to fire. And the nice thing is about this beat, not all picking together, is you can actually take it back out come out with double hinges and his figure does collapse back there just fine he still forms a, a body technically like just with a big gaping hole in it but you could have it where you have like a really heavily extended cannon I'm not sure what you can do with that panel there but you can get a really big extended cannon that really with all that bulk it's I mean it is kind of dumb that it leaves a big gaping hole and it means none of this really picks together well 
But it is interesting, at least you can actually extend the cannon out even further and make it like a really massive, dangerous looking cannon. So, that's Swindle from uh, Transformers the Movie. Or the 07 movie, anyway, not the 1980s animated one. Overall, he's an okay deluxe. I don't think he's particularly great. He definitely has the full-on movie quirkiness going on, especially for movie one where they weren't quite sure what they were doing. But he is pretty nice if you do like the quirkiness of it. With If you do like quirky figures and not Revenge of the Fallen RC quirky, but like movie one payload quirky, he might fit in for you. His gimmick isn't that intrusive. It doesn't really take up a lot of room. Um, his articulation could be a little bit better. I do wish his chest and everything pegged together better. And I wish this auto flip gimmick wouldn't go off so easily. But he is a decent little figure. I wouldn't, not particularly saying he's the best, but I do think he's a nice little figure. Um, you can get him for pretty cheap now. He's like 10, 15 bucks, I think. And if you don't like the color, you feel like the figures, but don't like the colors, there are repaints. There's a, like I mentioned, there's a silver and blue repaint. So, you know, you do have options for him. So, this has been Nerdy Transformed. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.